lot. What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Rise and Vapor Show. Um, I'm going to introduce the panel, first and foremost, of the Rise and Vapors. We have Mad Viking. We have Gone Vapor A. We have Circumstance Vapes. And myself, Spring Vaping Girl. We are going to pass this off to Mad Viking, and we're going to get this party started. All right. So I hope everybody is doing good out there tonight. So uh, we do uh, are going to do our usual deal where I try to uplift special guests and possibly embarrass them just a little bit. So let's uh, let's get this going. I hope you guys have fun tonight. So first up, we do have the ruler of the randomizer, the sole proprietor of the Papa Bear's Dungeon, Mr. <laughs> Whatchamacallit himself, Vaping <laughs> Vagan. There we go. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, sir. Is it buffet time? Not yet, sir. Oh, not yet. Okay. See, Mark wasn't listening when we I went down the drive. Not a surprise. Not not not. Mark's, Mark's just hungry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have secondly, so hold on to your women here, people. Barry White of Blunts, the Papa Smurf of Pods, the man with the voice that carries such sweet melodies. You better dry your panties. It's ST Vapes. What's going on, ST? What is up? What is up? Y'all just calm down. I know you hear that voice, but thank you for having me on. Look at that. Circumstances already wetting. I mean, laughing. All right. <laughs> We're doing good. All right. So everybody in chat knows, uh, you know, with special guests, they get special privileges. Uh, actually, I was grazing right past it we want to introduce real quick we're going to do this on the fly don't make fun of me so we have uh let's see we we have the totalitarian of the top side the dictator of the drop series it's big dictator. brian <laughs> the vaping chronicles what the vapor, is vapor chronicles vapor, Thank vapor. You. <laughs> hey everybody thanks for having me on the show it's good to be here and i'm totally gonna cheat because I hear Mark say, or excuse me, Brian say it every week. So we have the Greek god of vaping. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's like, you're an ass. Never mind. So, but yes, we do have Mike fucking vapes in here, guys. Come on, Mike vapes. How are you doing, sir? Good, good. Thank you for having me on, guys. Thank you. Hello, chat. Hello. Is Steve here? Yes, he's actually working. There you go. Editing a video. Getting ready to troll. <laughs> <laughs> We, we already got trolls. Oh, nice. All right. So with uh, the uh, guests here, so what we're going to do is we'll do our buffets, but we always let the special guests go first. So ST, what are you vaping on tonight, sir? So tonight, uh, just got a new little toy in the big boy boxer with the lipo rock in the Zeus X uh, top side single with the drop dead with that little pretty heavy tip there and what night wouldn't be complete without my freaking pods in hand uh juices i'm rocking my go-to that pb and jam monster the new one and i got some other shit laying around and some nick salts because like me and brian we're solely addicted Nick salt right now. It's a bad situation. We'll talk about that a little later, but that's what I'm vaping on tonight. Awesome. All right, Fagan, what are you vaping on, Mr. Muted? There you are. Uh, let's see. This is the... Here we go. I think it's the Aegis Mini or something like that, right? It's the Geek Vape, and Can't that is... Focus. Focus, there it is. Uh, that's a Geek Vape RDA. Don't know the name of it, but does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Got the uh, the rudder, rudder with the BTFC. I got two pod systems. Uh, don't know the name of that one. Focus. It's not. There we go. I don't have the mic lens. And then we got this Aspire pod system. Don't know the name of it. And uh, we got two juices. Gorilla banana custard. It's not going to focus. I'm just going to fuck it. And uh, 12 milligram Nilakilla. There we go on in the pod systems there that one focused you got focus. it focus <laughs> that's it thank you 
All right, Brian, what do you got tonight? What do I got? I got a uh, custom Infinix that I'm vaping on with a little bit of uh you know what? I think I might have it upstairs. 18 milligram. What is that stuff? Baker something? It was uh, a vapor. Baker Vapor or some shit? No, not Mount Baker Vapor. Yeah, no. that, yeah that's it. That's Baker it, Vapor. Yeah, I got the Cinnamon Toast Crunch in there, and it's delicious in 18 milligrams. I've been trying to lay off the Nick Salts a little bit, and it's, I actually feel pretty good. So I'm also vaping on a billet box. I got this vaping on tonight. I uh, also have this little sexy E Petite from uh, Lost Vape. E Petite with his light on top, which is a beautiful little combo. I need to find the silver tank though to go with it because this doesn't match at all. But it's a sweet little out and about setup for higher milligram Nick. Uh, what else do I got? I got uh, this little Dark SX that I've been vaping on with the profile Unity RTA. We'll join that. And Juice Hussein from Kuwait, care of Mike Vapes, New York. Uh, I got this. It's called Fresh Baked Butterscotch Cookie. Vaping on that tonight. That's what I'm going to be dripping. And uh, that's pretty much it. I might grab some other stuff off the desk, but that's it. Mikey, you're, you're up, man. Cool. Yeah. All right. Vaping on uh, this new iStick mod with uh, Rebirth RTA. And there I go. Oh, wrong one. Some uh, Raspberry Custard. Royal. SQ with the rebirth with some uh, taffy splash. That uh, Aegis solo with the Cerebus, I think it's called. Sub ohm tank. And there I have some of this blackberry milk. Where is it? There we go. Some of that inside there from Drift Fiends. And uh, be hitting off this pod too. Caliburn. That's it. Awesome. That's it. Right. Ray, what do you got tonight? <clears throat> tonight, I have the uh, Azeroth mech, which is a little dirty. The Azeroth mech with the cork from New Gen with some uh, Max Vapor Max Berries. Right there. The RX Machina. <laughs> from Wismec with some uh, white from the standard vape. The Battlestar with the Profile Unity with some uh, Strawberry Kangaroo Custard. And then the um, 18650 Spade Juma with some uh, Killer Custard. I'm all in the wrong camera. <laughs> All right, Chad, what do you got tonight for us? You're muted, Chad. Hogging out with the Batman PWM triple RTA with the um, Snozberries. I've got the Vapor SO switcher, blue stick. Um, I don't know what the name is. Uh, something Bait Company, South Shore. I can't read it. Too damn dark. Oh. Uh, Aqua. Rainbow Drop. I got the Apollo mod with the Aries Inakin uh, MPL. And Pod Juice, 55 milligram Nick Salt. Uh, DJ, uh, actually he's not muted for some reason. I don't know why, Chad, uh, you, I can't, we could can barely hear you. It's barely audible. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You're, you're good, man. Don't worry about it. Okay. He was vaping on some stuff and it's filled with some stuff and later on he'll put more stuff in there. So, uh, I'll go and then spring you can go after me. So mine's pretty quick and easy. Uh, I've got the Kennedy Vindicator with the isolation tank it is filled with a uh, paradise cali steam and then of course i have the viking setup i have the saris vape viking mech mod with the mjolnir rda uh, and that is filled with johnny copper raz the cherry really good good stuff and uh of course uh my spade with the uh pulse two 
and my crack line, which is of course Jam Monster, and I have mixed berries right now. So spring, what you got? I've got the paranormal uh, C with the Wasp Nano RDA with Freak Show Beta Nails. I have the top side single with the Elder Dragon with Blue Pucker, of course. Then I have the Vicious Ant Spade with the recurve with the heavy tip on top with Cali Vapors, the Fairmont, the Smoke Nord with Salt Bay Georgia Peach. And there you go. All right. Okay, so um, before we get into like just I guess the because we're kind of feeling a little dry here. Does anybody got anything they want to talk about before we just roll into the questions on ST and uh, and uh, vaping Fagan? Can we do the buffet again? I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'll recap Marks. It's the I don't know on the <laughs> son of a bitch. It? Yeah. Uh, so what Actually, you got? I got a question before we start. Mark, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you grab me that pair of shoes on the left side? Of the <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> oh, I, I do have a question for Mark on that one. So when we said, he's at Walmart, and he goes, it's the Mexican Walmart. What, how, how do you know? Look at uh, the, uh, look at the ab above the price. It's in Spanish. It's in I can't Spanish. see it, though. His yeah. camera, you know, mm. Mike has told me before that camera, you can't pick up any detail on anything. Whoa, whoa, using, whoa, what are you using? Shit. <laughs> you're using like your uh, you're using your 920 on there. This is it's in Spanish. Yeah, Why is there know. nobody in the store? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Because I'm here. Uh, when I go shopping, the, they shut they the shut, store down. <laughs> yeah, they shut the store down when I go shopping. Yeah, you're like a trailer. Over. Go ahead. Uh, the best running everybody question. over with his little mobile thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. Are you resting on the scooter? Yes, I am sitting on my scooter. Can you pan <laughs> down and let us see it? No, uh, no, I can't because I'm not wearing any pants. You got any little, little Debbies in that little basket? I got a lot of little <laughs> Debbies in my basket. <laughs> Age restriction. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. Little Debbies. So, um, kind of one of the first questions, The all, all of our questions are usually kind of to get to know the special guests. So... That's why I said this might be a little dry, but it's to, to help, you know, everybody get to know you if they don't know you, which if you're here, they know you. But anyway, uh, so like one of the first questions that I had for uh, ST or that we had for ST, uh, you had talked about one time on one of your lives about how uh, you had the feeling that you were just kind of burnt out with YouTube and you were just kind of like almost like F it, but you just kind of, you just kind of chinned up and, and just rolled through it. And, and now it's kind of a, Sounds like a just a back memory. What uh, what do you think led to that? And then also, what made it so that you know you just powered through it and said, "Screw it, I'm going to keep going." I've been doing YouTube now for four years. Uh, I think when that happened, of course, that was what about a year and a half, maybe I don't know how long ago that was, but even at that point, so. I work a full-time job. I work a lot of hours. It's not in the vaping industry. So for the time I put into that, opposed to the time I can put into this, it just got to a point where they were clashing with one another. And, and anybody can tell you this, if you've been doing YouTube for as many years as we have, regardless of how big your numbers are, regardless of you know, who's doing what, if you're consistent at it, it gets old after a while. You hit, you hit times where you get burned out with it. And that was just one of my points where it just kind of all hit me at once. And I thought I was going back out a little bit, but you know, after I made that decision, put a video out, I sat there and thought to myself, well, damn, you love doing this stuff, you know, regardless of how burned out you are on it, you just want to walk away from it. And I guess, you know, I let emotions make that call of, opposed to really sitting there thinking it out. So stuck with it. Uh, in my decision, it's always been a good decision. So, but yeah. Awesome. 
Uh, anybody on the panel or want to continue with that or have any other follow-ups for that? I think ST should probably quit YouTube. Yep. Um, I'm, <laughs> uh, my friends give the best advice. And normally when they give it to me, I always do the opposite. So <laughs> ST got a channel. <laughs> so yeah so good uh, good advice there for everybody in chat if mark tells you anything do the opposite exactly <laughs> it's true what if works for mark advice, also man. doesn't work for anyone else on the planet for some reason he's just fucking lucky i don't understand it <laughs> whoever stands by his trash cans is lucky but uh <laughs> oh, here we go. that is true He's the only guy that can become famous for having a dildo stuck to his head. His oh, head's perfectly there. shaped for a dildo. That, that's not even like something I did, though. That's thanks to all the viewers that told my wife to slap me in the face with a dildo. Ever since then, they just like seeing a dildo when it comes to me for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> it's probably the, the amount of banana playing you were doing, too. So I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know. It but is see, what it is. But two, me and Brian are a lot like the same because our jobs are beyond this industry. I mean, a lot of it. And Mark and Mike, this really kind of is their job right here. So we all get burned out. But for them to think that way, you know, it's not a feasible thing to do. So. Yeah, but it's also really cool because, you know, with our team, you know, me and spring work hours and I work like really goofy hours. It's like 4 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, as a metal worker. And so I do this on the weekends and I don't know how many times my team has pulled me out of the funk when I'm just kind of like, you know what? I lost a subscriber today and a company told me I was shit and I just I want to be done. I just oh, God. So it's cool for us that are kind of just starting out or still low numbered and been doing it for a while when somebody of your guys's caliber has had that moral decision of, you know, F it, this, this isn't worth it, but you still plowed through it. So it kind of gives, I think us hope as well that, you know, if you guys have done it, if we just keep grinding, keep making sure our content is at least decent, keep, you know, working on as much as we possibly can, eventually it might happen. So, well, I think it's important, like human beings are really good at building stuff and starting stuff. And we're really terrible for the most part uh, to have the drive for the maintenance stage. Because with everything in life, I don't care if it's your career, if it's your relationship, if it's your new car, new clothes, like everything gets stale. And a lot of times you have to push through to have the real benefits of things with that extra, you know, drive and, and focus. And it's not easy and it takes work. Uh, nobody becomes successful at anything with giving up when it gets hard. And I think that's really what separates people that become successful and not. The only side effect is you have to be careful when you invite new things into your life that take a lot of time and energy and focus. What are the sacrifices you're going to have to make and how is that going to impact your life? And is it worth it to take the risk? And that's something I have to ask myself even now. You know, and I think all of us had to do that. Like, you know, it changed your life changes as a result, good and bad. Yeah, that, happened, that actually happened to me. Uh, when I started the channel, uh, I was working full time. I had my own business and I came to a crossroad to where I was doing a video every day and working and that's crazy, but I was getting it done. But yeah. uh, I came to a point where I was getting burnt out. I was like, I got to choose it's either one or the other. You were, just to go down to doing one video a week or two just wouldn't cut it for me because I enjoy doing it, you know? So that's where I decided, you know what? No more working, no more. Uh, my job is going to be this YouTube. So I had to dedicate myself one way. So I gave up the money to do this, but I also needed to make money. And eventually it happened, you know? Yeah. And but it also helped that I had a wife, I have a wife that works. So a lot of people always complain about the reviewers that make money and that do this for a job. But I think it's a lot of the people that complain about it are the ones that don't have the opportunity to do it. Once yeah. you get the opportunity and you could choose either YouTube or your nine to five job, putting up with your boss's shit, more than likely you're going to choose YouTube. Yeah. I mean, uh, you don't see uh, like YouTube, like you don't see me complaining about people that have the job. Yeah. Well, I think I'm people... complained. I can't believe you fucking people work. <laughs> <laughs> you get money from your job. 
I think the people that complain about YouTubers doing this for a living and making money off of it don't know what really goes into making a video. Like, it, it's, they're under the impression that you get money to just sit down in front of a camera for five minutes, click a button, and boom, you're a YouTube star. And, and yeah. that's just not how it is. There's hours of editing and... There's a lot of work into it. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> Not only that, but it, people go to school to learn how to move their cameras, how to edit in software, how to work with lighting. How yeah. to, and most most people that are doing really good on YouTube have learned this on their own. You know what I mean? So it's you have to go out and personally learn on your own what most people pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to college to learn. Yeah. Well, a good example of that, my first couple of reviews, I was doing that whole green screen thing of my logo and my arms would disappear and shit and i mean look at brian's and look at mark's right now i mean it mark looks like he's a freaking walmart and brian i mean I that looks like that's his back deck of his house that is the back deck of my house yeah, I, 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 I moved up to the mountain <laughs> like in a rainforest in a rainforest <laughs> mountain rainforest that's awesome. but if you ever want to get hope about what hard work and perseverance provides all you have to do is go to any successful youtuber especially if you're doing the vape thing and go back to the beginning of their channel rip trippers grim green uh suck my mod mike <laughs> mark you know everybody it goes from being on it like almost unwatchable to getting better and better and better with experience yeah. my shit was unwatchable i can't even watch myself from the I just want to vomit. The days the of filming from the kitchen? Well, the kitchen was just a five minute clip and best clip that's ever. That's the only time I ever did the kitchen. <laughs> hey, yeah, Nick, but, uh, Nick just did a bathroom shot on his latest review, so you can't give crap about that. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the camera's just the regular, just regular doing reviews, and I was doing them out of the my uh, old vape layer. It was just hard. But as you go on, you have to. Teach yourself, and you got to say to yourself, if I want this to be successful, you have to actually start spending money. Yeah. That's the way it is. You got to spend money, up your game, up your background, make it look a little professional, your camera gear, your lighting, your microphones, all that stuff. You know, and as soon as that all started happening, you see the channel also. And also giving, doing, uh, it's also your cotton too. Content? Content. You know? Cotton. You said cotton. Cotton. I think I said cotton. It is your cotton, though. I mean, you built your channel on wicking, Mike. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And your right, Dude, I actually learned how to wick from your your reviews. So is my wife. Yeah. Yeah. But since we were talking about basically, uh, we were talking about building earlier. So one of the questions we had for you, Mark, is what point in time in your reviewing, and then what was your mindset when you decided, hey, I want to actually build product or help design products when brian came out with the drop and i figure i can easily copy it <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, i'm vaping on the nada right now hold on <laughs> those i don't know i just i never thought i would do something i mean it just everyone else is doing something i figured i would give it a shot and a company gave me the opportunity to try something and i tried it i got screwed over but you know Got a little experience and, and learned a few things, tried it again, got screwed over again, and now we're on round three. So this is the last strike. If I get fucked, I mean, you know, I think every if you get the opportunity, I think everyone wants to try it. Like, for those that say, no, I'll never put something out, don't say that, because I used to say that. Like, oh, I'll never put anything out. If, if someone gives you the opportunity to do it, you're going to want to do it. Yep. It's not always about the money. The money's nice. But if you get the opportunity, like you're gonna to want to do something. It's awesome to have something with your name on it, something that you created. I also think though, you also have to be like experienced. Like if somebody actually like um, Watofa or whatever, even a small company came up and said, Hey, you want to help us design something? I'd be like, I haven't been doing this long enough, so no, sorry. But I mean, you gotta have experience with like we do we review products, so we see shit every day. So we know what's good, what's bad, what we like, what you know. Yeah. But if you're but like a so new much. vapor on the scene and you only have like five atomizers in your whole lifetime, then you may not be the best choice. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. Sometimes there's been a lot of people out there that put out a ton of awesome shit that aren't that big of uh, like uh, Tenacious. He's not that big of a huge YouTuber. He put out an awesome mech mod. Yeah, and then you got, good. yeah, you got a bunch of people that have done so much awesome shit that are not. So I Stan's mean, also an engineer, too, though. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, he's like a master at CAD. That's what he does for a living. So 
he's like one, one of the realest of, of the designers that actually does the engineering behind the products, which is yeah. really impressive. Yeah. So it, it, anybody can do it pretty <clears> much. <throat> but if you get the opportunity, if, if a company comes up to you, I mean, I'm pretty sure no one would say no. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, go ahead Rick. Product building related question for, uh, I guess it would be for uh, Mark, Brian, and Mike. Um, who does your CAD work for you? Is it you guys, or do you have someone else that actually does all the CAD work for you? Whoever Me, I kind of just, I draw something up on my iPad, and then I let them kind of perfect it, because I have no clue how to use any of that work. So I, don't, I just draw something stupid, and then send it to them, and they perfect it. Yeah. Yeah, the three of us, I know I can speak for Brian, too. I don't, we don't know how to do, I've tried it once, and it's, yeah, it's hard. You actually got to go to school and learn that. You know, you, you got to, that's, it's hard. But uh, same thing, draw it out, you know, and then they start, to, they'll send you uh, pictures, like the CAD drawings. And from the CAD drawings, you could adjust. If they didn't get it the way you wanted it, maybe they didn't pick it up on the drawing that you did, you make your adjustments. Oh, so they convert your drawing into a CAD and then yeah. just, just kind of go from there. Yes. And then usually you go through like sometimes between three, five, six, seven prototypes before you nail it perfectly. Right. Well, in your case, you just donate products to company apparently. There, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that, I have to say kudos to you, Fagan, though, for not giving up. I mean, I know you've had issues with companies and stuff. So I have to say kudos to you for not giving up and still putting products out. Like, that's yeah, we, we, we got to the point where we got inspired enough. We had a subscriber actually uh, sell sell a high-end mod, and uh, he's like, hey, buy something for the team. And we actually have come in, I think, Tuesday, by the way, guys. Uh, we all actually ordered a stainless BTFC, so we each have a same atomizer to use on the shows. So That's, that's cool. awesome. That's really awesome. Was there a sale? or? I think they were yeah, like... It was on the clearance rack right behind Mark. Yep. <laughs> I, I think the BTFC, I think the reason why, because I, I never hear a bad thing about it. I just don't, I think it wasn't advertised like good enough. Which is crazy because they have the capability, like that company's had successful products and I just don't understand why they didn't push it more because it's awesome. And well, yeah, plus everywhere. me, I didn't, have, like compared to the way Brian advertises his shit and Mike does his shit, like I never advertised my shit. So that's probably one of the main reasons why it didn't, wasn't well, so successful but you actually told everywhere. people not it's, to buy it on yeah your that too <laughs> it did tell people don't buy it but it's all over the place i mean it's all over instagram it's all over facebook you see it everywhere i don't see how they can yeah. say that it wasn't successful i mean almost every every scroll at some point you see a bpfc yeah, yeah. you gotta remember too that company was pretty shady because it it fucked over two big reviewers, not just that's one. Tiger Tech. Yeah, that's Tiger Tech. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking the wrong one. Pay attention, Scott. Thanks. I know. I'm I'm looking at this football game right now. No, I'm kidding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, and yeah, we are a little drier with special guests. So yeah, watch football game. Uh, Thank you. I'm good. <laughs> but uh, when I actually started, the drop solo just came out, and a lot of uh, your products, Mike, actually started dropping too, and after my first product I tried, literally, that's one of those things that I think people just get used to. It's like, if it has Mike Vapes on it, or if it says drop something on it, I'm going to buy it because my first experiences, they were really good. So maybe with yours, Mark, is people were just kind of like, yeah, he's a great reviewer. I'm not sure about the atomizer. And since I guess maybe there wasn't a series of stuff, I, that, I don't know. But I think I seriously think your RTA will do well, though. Well, the, the BTFC deck, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I think per, for me, the BTFC deck is the greatest build deck that's ever been created, I think. Yeah, they just so. didn't, they didn't, once again, uh, Ogvape didn't perfect it. Like they didn't, I don't know what, Ogvape's weird. I don't know what, what has to do with advertising or what it is, but. Yeah, but that intake was good that they did with Mike though. I, yeah. I still have that one too. Use it. I think I've noticed a lot of companies when I talk to them, they all want to be like hell vape. They all want to like make it rich overnight. Cause I guess heathen 
turned Hellvape into a big company. They used to be small people, like small little office, and then they came out with the Dead Rabbit, and they grew. So now every company thinks that if they do a project with a reviewer, they're going to turn into the next big company. But it's never, it's not always like that. No. Nope. Yeah. One well, and uh, the other question we had for you, St. Uh, speaking of just like kind of products and stuff, is we know that you're really kind of getting really just on the pod train. So if you can remember, what was the first pod system you tried that kind of clicked in your head like, well, I actually do like pods since, you know, of course, pods are like the thing right now. I hate to say it, but uh, the Jewel. That's not a bad thing, that. though. Yeah, I can see that. It's not bad, but uh, <clears throat> I had a buddy that worked at a vape shop, used to go there all the time. And uh, of course, you know, I would this has always been my guy, <clears throat> stuff like this. And he was always vaping a pod in there. And he's like, dude, just try it. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Well, the particular one he had, the Nick, I forget what flavor it was, but it just, it killed me. I was like, man, there's no way, no way. And he says, well, hold on. I got another flavor here. Try this one, see if you like it. And I think it was actually the mint one. And it was a lot smoother on me. And I was like, you know what? I could see myself messing with something like this. And he said, well, here, take one. So I took it and the rest of it's downhill from there. I just, the more stuff kept coming out, the more I kept getting. And again, I, I don't, these aren't my sole device, but I use them a whole lot and because it's a vaping product. I know a lot of people have a hatred for pods for some reason, but they are categorized just like any other vaping product out on the market. It's something you vape on. It's not, not cigarette smoke coming out of this. So, but I enjoy them. Uh, I enjoy them in my setting in here. I'm in an, I, I've converted one of my rooms into an office and have opposed to sitting here just fogging it out like crazy. I can sit here and enjoy my pod in here. Yeah. So. And Brian, since you were, you were saying, you know, you're kind of having issues with like Nick salts. Mm -hmm. So kind of almost the same question for you is what, what pod really just got you into Nick salts and, and into the, the whole pod craze. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Um, I, I had a jewel, but for me, it was a little bit too harsh at the time because the Nick level was really high. And um, at this level now, I can vape it with no problem. But I would say probably, um, I don't know. You, what do you think? The Infinix, Mike? Yeah, probably the Infinix. I fell in love with the Infinix. And most of it was just convenience and hands-free and when I'm driving and going to work every day. And then eventually I realized that it's really satisfying. Now, I'm one of those vapors. Like I went out today to, to, to a party for lunch. And with, with me, I brought a sub ohm tank mouth to lung type setup. I brought my Infinix and I also brought a, like a topside dual with an, an RDA on there. So like, I'm like a three type of vapor, you know what I mean? There's different things for different situations. So. All right, Cause I still do temperature control and I still build mouth to lung coils. So I but, mean, it's one of those things. Yeah. The, the thing I think that turned at least the four of us on even more to pods, we all had jewels. But then the bow came out and the yeah. bow was less Nick. And we were like, wow, these are good right here. So we had our bow craze going for a while and then started kind of the chain started. Well, see, now Spring, Spring does a lot of pods. She loves pods. Like the North is like one of her favorite ones. And she actually, I, I can't do Nick salts. I just, they mess with me. But then uh, she got me kind of going on to it. And I know there are some people in chat that have talked about it before. They can't do Nick salts. But I actually found that if you find the companies that do like the 24 milligrams, like the lower ones, like uh, Bad Drip Labs, I will actually use that Nick salt because it doesn't mess with me like the 35, 45, and 50s. Uh, Ray, he uses pods. And I think, Chad, you don't use pods, correct? Because I just got you into mouth and lung, right, with that Aries? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you still can hear you, Chad. Sorry, dude. So, Mike, is that pretty much the same thing with you? Is was it the Infinex, or was it something before that? Uh, I tried the what do you call it? The um, the Jewel. Mm -hmm. It was okay. It wasn't the greatest. A little strong for me. I tried the bow. I didn't like the bow. But then, uh, but I was still interested in it because the Jewel 
there was those situations where you couldn't vape something like so that jewel that's the only time i used it was in certain situations but then uh the infinix just changed it for me i might i've even used it in the house i'll use it or go up when i'm upstairs if i don't want to cloud up the house i'll use it but i uh, for me it was the infinix but I, but nick salts i never really touched nick salts just a little bit i'm more into uh just regular high strength nicotine no, hey, Mark. You, you had said that I use pods. Um, I I don't actually. I mean, every once in a while, like a little bit. Um, I only have three pods. I, I have the Orion, the Cube, which no one probably even heard of, and the Magic. And the only one I'm using right now is the Magic. And the only reason I use this is because you can change the cotton on it, and that's it. Yeah. There's still more pods than I use. So, <laughs> yeah, the cube, the cube is actually. I don't think many people have heard of this thing. Yeah, I did a video for that. It's got a oh. little. You slide mm -hmm. it up and down. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the beginning of fidget spinner vapes. Well, there was another product like that from. Uh, who was this? Compact. Uh, was it Spoke? No, Segeli. Segeli, right? Yeah, Segeli had one that looked like this and then you would push this little button and the little fucking straw would pop up yeah yeah kanger tech has the has the k-pen uh, yeah i actually do have that and it's like the lipstick thing you, you turn it and a little lipstick thing comes up mm -hmm. i think vapresso I, I don't you know the the flavor i hear is okay but that the vapresso the aurora play that's going to be big because then you get people that just went from smoking and it's a zippo basically <laughs> So they're going to be playing with that and still using it. So it's like they did a dual purpose. But it's, what about you, Mark? What about the the pods and Nick salts? What's your opinions on them? In the beginning, I didn't like pod systems, but they've gotten so much better now. Um, I actually enjoy like the Orion, the uh, EQ, the Nord. I don't do Nick salts. Like the only time I do Nick salts if I have to do it for be something. Honest about it. I don't like I don't like Nick salts. Well, they, you got scared. You got scared. Well, yeah, I had like a I thought I had a reaction to Nick salt. I overdid it because I had like a really bad reaction where I was breaking a sweat and I couldn't even like walk and it was pretty bad. I almost went to the hospital and I swore it was because I overdid it with the nicotine. So after that, I don't do Nick salts anymore. And I keep hearing everybody something like something happens. Just like I don't know. Everyone had something happen to him, and I swear it's due to Nick salts. <laughs> I don't fuck with Nick salts. And when I refer to Nick salts, I mean like 35 milligram, 50 milligram. I'm not talking about three, six milligram, 12 milligram, but I just don't touch Nick salt. I do regular nicotine. If I do a pod system, I'll do 12 or 18 milligram. And that's a high as I go. Speaking yeah. of that, um, like Viking said, I, I do use quite a few pods. I use them at work, honestly, stealth vaping, you know, um, and I use Nick salts, but I've also, for people that don't particularly want Nick salts, I always refer them to Ghost Stick, honestly, because I've tried the strawberry and I've tried the other one that ST absolutely loves. Uh, the name has went straight out. My head. Yes. Um, you know, so that that's where I refer them. If they don't want Nick salts, I tell them to hit, hit that juice. Go over there and get the Ghost Stick. Yeah, the ghost stick is. I forget all about that. That's probably the number one I use. Is yeah, ghost stick. Everyone uses the Infinix. I've I've never used the Infinix, but I hear it's, amazing things about it. I've never it's used not, it either, actually. It's not the best. I mean, a lot of people have been saying that the Caliber and kills it. I don't have a Caliber, but I want to definitely buy one probably this week. But um, as far as the Infinix for me, it's just the how lightweight it is. And also the fact that I can bite on it because I bite everything. That's the only fucking reason. Now, the pods themselves are inconsistent. They get weepy. So you'll get like uh, shorting of the device itself because liquid gets in the uh, the chamber uh, where the positive and negative contact is. So there's definitely some huge flaws, but it's so cheap. Like you can buy them now for like 18 bucks for a kit that come with two, two refillable pods and the device. So it's almost disposable to me. Yeah, for me, the Caliburn has retired the Infinix. Can you bite on it, Mike, and hold it in your mouth? Then that's what I'm getting. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Uh, I don't. I don't know about biting it the way you do. I mean, you could see the mouthpieces. The Infinix mouthpiece is bigger. Hold on. Let me ban Mark from chat. <laughs> <See it? laughs> uh, oh yeah, the Infinix is bigger. Yeah. 
Now, when you guys use those those like uh, stick type pots, do you smoke them or vape on them like your cigarettes, or do you? Or do you no, I hit them. I hit them like those constantly. Yeah, for me, a pot a pot has to be similar to a cigarette. I mean, there's no reason like this for me. There's no reason to like, for example, the Orion for me is too much airflow. So that's more of a direct lung device. But uh, for me personally, well, I don't know, I'll, I'd rather use this. I'll do direct lung or an RDA. This a pod for me has to be more of the stealth vape. I'm not looking to do a cloud comp with it. I just need my nicotine fix where nobody notices I'm vaping around them. Yeah, and I, and I try to tell folks that all the time, like on pod videos, that I use this for a mouth to lung. To me, pod systems were not made for direct lung. They weren't made to blow big clouds. They're a mouth to lung device. That's what they're used for. Yep. See, that's why I don't like pods too much myself personally, because since I quit smoking, I don't I don't want to do the mouth to lung thing. It just it just reminds me of smoking. I end up craving a cigarette. With the Orion, I, I open it up all the way and I hit it direct along whenever I'm out. And that's what I like about the Magic, too. It's You can take a direct along hit on it. So. Yeah, everyone vapes different, and I think they make the pod systems, they make them different. Like some are have the airflow wide open for the direct lung vapors who like pods, and others are really tight for that tight cigarette-like airflow. You know, yeah. everyone's different. I don't think there's a wrong way or a right way to vape it. It's whatever I, you prefer. I I don't, I don't mean it like that. I just meant that I feel that pods were designed for mouth to lung. That, that's my theory to it. Yeah, but it's not a tight, like, cigarette filter tightness. It's yeah. almost like you're sort of sucking on weed a little tighter than weed. Not, not weed. That, you know. The only pod system I had that's exactly like a cigarette was that Smoke SLM mod that they said not to review. <clears throat> that, was, that thing was too tight, man. I was like, I couldn't even get a vape off it. That reminded me exactly of a cigarette. That's how tight it was. Like, it was super tight. This slide is super tight if you want it to be. And the flavor is really good. It, it reminds me it, very much like a pod type type of vape if you're into a tank. I'm really impressed with this so far. Because isn't that just the new Zenith with a slide top fill? Yeah. Okay. So now the Zenith tanks were good. What's the Let difference? Me I mean, I don't... Go ahead. Let me tell you one of the top uh draws you can get off of a pod system but the pod system itself was a fail <laughs> the yee one all oh, the new this, one yeah that's actually that had an awesome draw to it that had a cigarette draw but the but the pod system itself is a complete fail so, see and i like the manual draw that's that's why the the caliber would be cool because it does both yeah. yeah, the the button thing. I I had this thing firing in my pocket at the doctor's office. The doctor told me, "Hey Ray, your leg is crackling." It was it, it was in my pants. What's the but difference? The, that's um, the same thing with the caliber and too. I wish it didn't have the button. I wish you could ch choose which one you want to do, whether you want to press the button or take it direct, because <laughs> you might forget and put it in your pocket, and it'll still fire when you press the button. Or I could just vape it right now without pressing the button. Or vape it by pressing them on. So I wish you could deactivate one of them. Mm. Does it have a I've... cutoff? Yeah, it should have a cutoff, but no matter. Yeah. If it happens, then you you burnt your uh, burnt pot. The if you, this is the, what you have with you, if you're out somewhere, maybe at a supermarket, something, or wherever you are. No, I don't. I know it work. I don't do I... mouth along at all, so I don't know the difference. But what's the difference between a mouth along tank and a pod system? Like, like I don't, because I don't do the mouth along thing. I don't know what the what the difference is. Why people would like one over the other? Size is one thing. So Passive. usually a pod system is going to be size. So you're gonna it's going to be smaller, but the battery life will be less. Usually the 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 pod systems use less voltage because they're much smaller and the coils are smaller. But at the same time, a tank or something like that is going to have more capacity, but it might drain juice faster. So I think it's portability for the most part. What about flavor? Do you get more flavor off of it? Nope. It depends on the pod system. It depends on the tank. You know, some tanks don't have much flavor, but it's, but I think that, I think that when you search for flavor, you're going to get such an intense burst of flavor in your face when you vape an RDA and when you vape an RTA that go into a pod, it, it, you want 
a hint of flavor. You want some flavor there, but you're not doing it to flavor chase. You're doing it for that satisfying pull, more discreet, more portable, more mm-hmm. invisible nicotine. And like, sometimes you just don't want, like I have an air purifier upstairs that automatically turns on. Right. So if I'm watching TV, if I start blowing big clouds, that thing turns on the fan turns on really loud. So sometimes I just want to puff, put it down and not focus on vaping, you know, cause so it's like sometimes convenience. it's convenience. Yeah. 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 Now I, I can see what you were saying about the flavor thing because a while back Viking was trying to get advice for getting his wife to quit smoking. And, um, he, I finally told him, I was like, you know, look, tell her to stop looking for flavor. If she's looking for flavor in a pod system, tell her to stop. Worry about getting that nicotine fix. Get off the cigarettes because the flavor is going to change anyway. As soon as you're, you're completely off the cigarettes, a lot of flavors change. And then worry about flavor. Then start looking for some really good juices. Start looking for better pods, more clouds, all, all that. The, the main thing was, you know, get her off the cigarette. You guys think about it. When we smoke cigarettes, was it like, oh, that flavor is amazing? <laughs> no, no. No, so what are you complaining about? <laughs> well, and the problem is that the I had... Cigarettes are disgusting. We're yeah. just addicted to the nicotine. I had two pivotal points when it came to vaping, and first is when I started vaping. I went in a two-month span. I probably spent easily thousands of dollars because I went from a Zenith tank to a dripper because I was flavor chasing, and that's why I was asking for her because it's like, well... She almost divorced me over that. And then when I decided to start the channel and start spending money on a channel, that was the second caveat where she's like, do you really want to do this from your car? Stop it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. If you start flavor chasing, you're going to end up spending a lot of money. We were saying recently, like we talked about if, if these types of devices were available, like the Caliburn and all these the Orion, I don't think we ever would have graduated to even going on YouTube and doing reviews because they were just, they're so satisfying. The reason why we started to get into RTAs and rebuilding and the more batteries and things like that was we were chasing a satisfying vape experience, which just so happened to produce more flavor, which just so happened to give us more nicotine. And uh, that was sort of what led everyone down that pathway. It's interesting where things are now. And that's why pods are taking off. People are finding them satisfying. And if you're going from a, I remember the first time I vaped an RDA at a local vape shop. And I remember I had a, uh, uh, what was that? The Aspire Nautilus Mini. And I was vaping it at like 14 watts. And I remember 18 milligram Nick, 24 milligrams of Nick. And I remember somebody saying, try this. And they handed me a mech mod with an RDA on it with the airflow wide open. And honestly, it felt like walking into a steam room. (laughs) <laughs> it was not satisfying. It was disgusting. It reminded me nothing of why I wanted to start vaping, but all of a sudden, you know, your tastes change, your preferences yeah. change. And they've actually sort of gone that, to a huge airflow, lots of clouds angle. And now they're sort of coming back down to a more tighter draw. And that's the beauty, man. We have all these choices and options and things to try and experiment with. It's fun. Yeah. You know, yeah, my vape, my vape habits have changed too. I've noticed it went from like lots of airflow and clouds to more restricted lower wattage. Yeah. Uh, even, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I wanted to ask. Like, uh, I don't know how did when you guys smoked your cigarettes, were you guys uh, direct lung in it like an RDA? No, no, no. You were MTLing. Yeah, basically. MTLing, right? And yeah. no one cared about clouds either. Yeah. I think the only time you direct loan you smoke is when you smoke weed. That's it. I see so many people saying that they don't they don't know how to do uh, mouth to lung or they've never done mouth to lung. So I'm just always wondering, like, did you smoke? Yeah. yeah. Cigarettes? Yeah, yeah when you smoke I this. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I tell people when they're trying to quit and they're I, I see them hitting a pot or something and they're just kind of like having a problem. I just it, look, it's just like smoking a cigarette. It just you're literally just replacing the nicotine. Yeah, that's it. Just smoke it like it's a cigarette. And I think it's the airflow that makes things kind of weird for a new vapor to try to use it like a cigarette. Because the airflow in a pod, I don't care what anyone says, is totally different from a cigarette. A cigarette is so restricted that it's so easy to do a mouth to lung vape. But when you get a pod system, it's a little bit more mean, wide open, and you I don't have any restriction. Heat. I think it's the heat factor, too. When you actually take a drag off a cigarette, you can feel the heat along with the smoke in your lungs. You don't get that from a vape unless you're on, like, an RDA doing Bogan style at, like, 150 watts. You know, yeah. you don't, 
you don't really get that as much. So that's probably another reason why, but yeah, the airflow, you're not, you're just not used to sucking in that much air when you're inhaling a cigarette. Yeah. See, the pot just don't give you that heat like cigarettes do. Yeah. I like feeling that like turbulent air going into my mouth while I'm vaping. You know what I mean? Like there's really kind of turbulent, like the Falcon, the, the Falcon mesh has that like turbulent air for me. And I actually like that. I'll say that's the that's one of the differences for me when smoking. Like you said, you felt the heat. I don't like a hot hot day. It uh, it's just not my thing. It which is kind of odd, I guess. You know, being that I did smoke for twenty years, but I don't I don't want it real hot. So, right. yeah. Well, here's here's a good question that kind of refers back to a little while ago. You've asked us the question of why we started doing what we do, but why did y'all start doing this? Why yeah. why have y'all got into YouTube now? There you go. Thanks, that's deep. Ray, why don't you go first on that one? Why did I start? Well, I started watching uh, the reviews like when I first started vaping, and uh, it just it just amazed me how the community kind of came together. So I got more and more into the community, and um, I actually had a couple people tell, like after talking to him on the phone, I actually had a couple people tell me, you know, look, you explain these things pretty good. You should do some reviews. Um, so I started doing written reviews and that's all I did was written reviews. And, uh, you know, the website grew and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, I think that the next natural step for me was just video from, from written. Uh, but I, I like doing the videos. A lot more it's a lot more work it is doing a written review is you know it's just sitting down and writing and being a little creative with what you write but um now i, I continue to do them because of the community it's the the people i've met in the community have just been friggin' amazing and uh, that's one thing i always say about the vaping community is it's one of the only places that i've personally been in you know part of where you can have walks from every type of life, you know, people from every type of life, lawyers, uh, uh, you know, people in recovery, uh, just everyday working Joes, everyone just all come together. And if you get in a fix, you will have people that stand up and help you out and, and, and all that. So that's why I keep doing it. But it was just kind of like the natural progression for me from written reviews to video. Hey, Chad. Go ahead and talk and see if we can hear you. Now. Now. Uh, so we'll we'll hand it to you real quick, Spring. Um, actually, I mean, I started vaping. September will be eight years ago. I was told I was going to be an aunt, so that's why I started vaping. Um, because I wanted to be the cool aunt that could be in the yard running with him. And I did. I was sitting here on a Saturday one day, and the first reviewer I ever seen was Twisted Four Twenty. I didn't even know that YouTube reviews existed. So that, that was a little over a year ago that I found him. And then I found Mike and then I found TVC and Fagan and ST. You know, it kind of just fell off. I found everybody, so to speak. Um, and the love that I got from the community, even when my, my story video, if you watch it now, I mean, it's crap. I'll be the first one to tell you. But people liked the story. You know, they liked my story and the love that I got from the community just made me keep doing it. Um, and I enjoy it. I mean, it's, you know, like Viking said earlier, I do have a daytime job as well, but this is kind of my relaxation. I, I relax when I do reviews and, you know, I learn. I've learned and I've met some great people. So, yeah, that's why I keep doing it. Uh, real quick, actually, that is a good question. So Bob Ellis wants to know, this is a question for Ray, uh, where is the donation for the Valhalla hit for Viking? <laughs> um, and are we doing that? Because God damn it, that hurt. But I'm not taking any donations for anybody. Okay, thank but, you. Uh, but, Sorry, Bob, you know, we're not doing it this time. But uh, we do have a GoFundMe. No, I'm only kidding. Um, no, uh, no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. No, I'm not taking any donations for anything. But uh, Bob Ellis, if you want to grab me on Facebook, I do need to talk to you about something. Though. See, Bob, here's how we didn't prepare. The Mahala is still on the rebuilding stand. So, no. 
that that hurt last time. You better get the building. Oh, Mute when yeah. you're vaping, please. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think we should have a special since we have so many great people on the panel tonight. I think we should have a special uh, Valhalla hit from you there, Viking. Uh, I'll start building. Come on, Viking. <laughs> did you hear the question, Chad? Yes, I did. Can y'all hear me now? You sound yeah, much better, bro. Much better. Yeah, just do me a favor. When you're vaping and you're not talking, mute. Don't pull a Brian. Shut That's up. That's why I don't like these damn headphones. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Uh, circumstance. Uh, the question is to you, sir. Well, I started basically started YouTube because my V Pro had a um, <clears throat> they had an open sign up for Vandy Vape to review for them, and I signed the thing and sent it to them and like a week later they sent they said all right we're gonna start sending you stuff so the first thing i reviewed was the kylan 2 and when i started doing it i was like hey i like this and then met all these awesome people so that's mainly why i'm doing it if i can just like i say if i can help one person all my videos could help somebody decide on a device or something then it paid off definitely yeah, that's it. That's a huge thing too. When you have somebody message you or, or, or grab you on, on social media and they say, you know, thank you, you know, I, I you know, talking to you or, or, you know, hearing something you said helped me get off cigarettes, that, that actually, you know, that's a huge driving factor to keep going forward. I was successful getting a couple of my coworkers. They, they actually don't vape anymore, but they smoked for years and I got them to vape it. And they finally weeded their stuff down to zero and they, they don't even vape anymore, but they don't smoke either. So nice. that was another reason. And people would always ask me, you know, questions about vaping and stuff. So that was another reason I started the channel as well. Uh, I hate to interrupt one second, but I have to go. Oh, actually, I just noticed the time I'm late. I got to go. See you, Mike. Thank you for being uh, on, Mike. Thank Mike. you for having me. Good night, everyone. Good night, man. Mikey motherfucking vapes. <laughs> Latest. <laughs> I'm curious. Does anyone on the, on the panel? Um, do you have a? Do you plan on dropping down the zero and then eventually quitting vaping? Like, is that your goal eventually, or no? Uh, only if my channel goes under. <laughs> no, yeah. I tried that three years ago when I first started vaping. Um, Fagan was actually the first one that I started seeing reviews, and I started on zero, Nick and never touched a cigarette vape for a year and i quit moved to florida from tennessee the second day i was here i started smoking cigarettes again so i'm back on vaping and this time i ain't gonna stop because then i'll end up wanting a cigarette again that was my my goal when i first started vaping i mean that was the whole purpose of me picking up a vape was was to get off cigarettes and then eventually get down to zero nick and just be done with anything that involved putting something in my lungs, right? Um, but once you start a YouTube channel or start doing any type of review type thing, you have to stay in that realm, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't be doing written reviews or video reviews or anything if I'm not vaping. So you, you, you kind of get stuck in a spot, you know, when you do this. But um, whenever I help people quit smoking, like I have a whole bunch of people that actually come here physically and I help them I help them rebuild and you know show them how to do things and all that I always tell them you know work your way down to zero and then just get off because it's harm reduction it's 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 not a replacement for life so yeah even as, aside from doing reviews I think people that don't do reviews they get into the hobby side of it and they just enjoy the community meeting people you know you got zoom rooms you got all this other stuff so I think a lot of people get into the hobby side of it. Like me, I also thought I was going to quit smoking, take vape, take up vaping, and then quit vaping. Like that was my my plan, but I didn't realize it was going to turn into a hobby and then into YouTube. Yeah, I remember when you started. I think one of your first reviews I watched was the key um, naked fish. Oh wow, Dude. yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was long ago. I remember seeing um, videos of you building, showing how to build. The, the, yep. how, to, how to build a wire and that you, was long ago <laughs> you must have had your monitor like right here because yep. in, you were like really close to the screen and you kept looking over yeah so you were like looking at the monitor to see what it looked like on the camera 
Yep. I remember when Mark, you stole the Harley Davidson logo yep. and like also like played Nickelback covers. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah, I've only heard you play your guitar once. At, 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 out of all the videos that you've had, I personally have only heard it one one time. It'll, it'll yeah. be sick. I remember back in the day when Brian actually did reviews. Those were the good old days, weren't they, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I was wondering when you, that was going to be brought up. I just got to give a shout out to Brian. I know I'm late on getting the top side. I just got the single, but this thing is freaking amazing. Thank you, man. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have one eventually, but I've heard nothing but good things about him, man. Nah, Shut up, it. Ray. you got a vicious ant spade. Hush it. We got really cool subscribers, all right? Yeah. I have a, I, I'd like to ask Brian a question about, about, um, about the unity. Real quick, because uh, I got it all waked up, ready to go. What am I doing with the Valhalla? <clears throat> you don't Ray? have my opinion. Spring off no. you. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna take a, a a big hit off of five second for the panel, the guys on the panel panel again. Okay, so because okay. Bob Ellis, Bob Ellis, you're like, where's the donation? You get this one for free, Bob. Oh, Ten seconds, Viking. It's no. actually, it's actually in the description. What is happening right now? <laughs> we're we're going to Valhalla. We uh, on the last show we. It, Anyone who did a five dollar donation, they would get a five second hit off of the Valhalla or the yeah. from uh, yeah. my uh, counter said five and a half, so suck it, Ray. I was I was the I was the the uh, designated counter, so I was like one. Hold on, hold on, I missed two. it. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Viking. Us. I always wondered because these devices have eight or ten second cutoffs. Who the hell vapes for eight or ten seconds? Who takes? Yeah. Who could take a vape that long? Like I don't. Well, I don't vape some, if you're vaping a pod system and you're doing it direct long, you kind of have to vape that long in order to get like with the with the magic. I mean, I can you do an eight second pull without stopping on the Valhalla? Or are we just talking in general? It's just in general. Like, is oh. that how anyone? You can't comfortably do an eight no, second no, vape. Like, no, not that's like just somebody off. Yeah. I always wonder why they always brought them that high. Like, why not like a five second cutoff? What is a Valhalla? Okay, we got to kick Rachel out of chat. What is a Valhalla? You, you're watching a Viking. <laughs> Come on. It's, so it's the Vapors Cloud, the 38 millimeter uh, RDA. It's everybody's doing a review on it right now with the Stormbreaker, the 21, the 3 21700 mechanical mod, which, oh, damn shit. it, I want. But uh, it's just, it's stupid, is what it is. It's called little, irresponsibly A little, little bit of overhang there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the only, the only mod I could find that would fit on it, but that's a small build in it. That's just like a tiny build. Can you use Nick Salt on that? Uh, yeah, no. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> my, my coil builder in Norway... He's sending me a set of series coils, and they're 12 wraps long, and that's what he vapes it on. And I'm like, oh. Okay. That reminds me, because I, I was going to say only only as a dare on the vape team, but uh, I was the one that came up with the Pink Stacy dare. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> that, that was my... You're the reason why all these dildos are around me now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not... I would love to. I would love to see scientific tests on like different types of apes and what can, what um, data pr is produced by what we're inhaling. Like, is there a difference vaping huge volumes of, of uh, e-liquid in a thir 30 or 40 millimeter RDA versus a pod system? You know what I mean? Like, what is the risk that we're increasing by doing it? And I'm sure there is. I don't think oh, there's yeah. any way that you can have that level of heat and that level of uh, volume without having more exposure to things. Yeah, and I'm, but is it harmful? You know what I mean? It would be nice to know. And I'm sure that, you know, vaping off of a RDA or an RTA or something like that, it's much, much hotter. And I'm sure that the heat has a different reaction a little bit, you know, to the to the e-liquid too compared to a pot. So Maybe. I'd like well, to I see think it. That's, that's why also I think a lot of people in Cayman, I'm not beating up your gungers on there i know whatever but uh i think that's why also it's it's safer so when we told this everybody at the last show you know something i'm doing is just because i'm stupid don't do it if you are going to have a really big rda or something like that that's why they have series coils it's it, you can have that much surface area and it's not going to be stupid and basically burning your face off i'm just stupid don't be stupid yeah don't you can do an eight like second 
If you do an eight second vape off a serious mod, holy shit. Yeah, there's oh my god. That'd be Oh. And by the way, I'm not saying anybody shouldn't vape any way they want. I, I love taking huge, super hot reps. I mean, it's not personal. It's just I'd like to know the data. Yeah, yeah I, I still want too. them to finalize that data that, that they were saying uh, their biggest first push on the because I do some advocacy with my reviews is they were starting to say that there might be a possible link of some flavorings when they're actually vaped because of the combustion or the heat that it changes their properties and that could be what's harmful and it's like okay you guys have had like eight months since you came out with that statement where's the data right i'd right. love to see that well i mean it's there's going to be new new stuff coming out constantly about what is and isn't happening you know as as time goes vaping is still in its infancy you know what i mean so you know, just like smoking, it, it's it's going to take a long time before a lot of stuff is found out. But there's also going to be a lot of hyped up, you know, propaganda too. So it's you have to learn to kind of you know pick and choose what you believe and what you get in stuck into a rabbit hole. With, you know, well, most of the money's coming from both sides. The one side that has the the ideology of you know abstinence, you know, only, and then you have the harm reduction side. And that that funding comes from mostly tobacco companies. Uh, but there's a third funding. party involved there too. Don't forget the money that you donate. <laughs> <laughs> Vaping yeah. does cause dehydration and erectile dysfunction. No, you have de you have Not erectile dysfunction time, for a lot of other reasons, Mark. Don't That's get... because you eat a little box of Debbie every day. I'm just <laughs> you're dehydrated because you eat tons of salt, you eat tons of fatty foods, and you fucking. Oh no! Wait. Eat... What did I say vaping does cause? It herpes. No, <laughs> it um dry knuckles. The it kills the sperm uh, brain cells? We got a female on the show. Son of a bitch. That's all right. Go ahead. Okay. Believe me. Go ahead. Can... Chad, mute your stuff. She can swing it like us. So you guys noticed that when you started vaping that you just can't shoot your loads as far as you used to? <laughs> no. No, you didn't notice that? I, did, do you measure? No, but no, now I just something new for the intro for you. <laughs> Mark's, Mark, Mark's comes out like yogurt from one of those little yogurt tubes. Uh, like, a little, you know, like a little squeeze? Super I've thick. Talked, I've like talked the... to many vapors, and they've noticed a decrease in their length where they can Mark, Mark, shoot Mark. their orgasm. No, <laughs> Who the hell are you talking to, Mark? Exactly. Where the fuck <laughs> are these conversations <laughs> happening? At the okay. rest area? How you get in the vape form and start talking about semen? We have we all have homework to do. So after the show, yeah. we all video it and show them our measurements, and then <sighs> a month later everyone, we have it again. Yeah, everyone send their masturbation videos to Mark. No, just, the reason why he has that issue is because he's got 450 pounds of gut hanging over top of. Him. I am oh. not even close to 450. I barely hit 300. I think the reason why yours doesn't is because you're not even hard when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's sending it through like a, 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 a you know a, a hose that's soft. All right. Maybe just it's with old, old everywhere. Yeah. I guess when you get older, you just kind of lose the length. I, I think I'm older than you, and I know that doesn't happen. Can you shoot like feet or? Again, who the hell measures that? <laughs> Hold on, honey. Let me get the tape measure. I'm about to finish. Don't move. Mark's going to send out a measuring tool, and it's going to be like a laminated picture of his face, and it's going to have like little lines across it, and you're going to have to send him a video of it. <laughs> Just don't call it a coily tool. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm used to being the oldest guy on the show, but, you know, now we got we got St. Vapes. Don't you say it. How old are you? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to be 43 in April. Oh, God damn it. I guess I am. Wow. <laughs> That's what I say. I'm 41, Although, so it wasn't that much different. Jay Hayes thinks I'm 72. So, Senior citizen vapes. Yeah. That's exactly what he calls me. Citizen That's, vapes. You know, that, is that one thing that we don't have yet is a senior citizen vape show? Yeah. There you go. ST, me and you, we're going to start the senior oh, citizen. Geez. ST. <laughs> Why do you, go, you go straight to ST? I mean, seriously. Me, me and ST, I we're going to. I guess I need to just color my beard or something. We're on the Fresh Prince years, I'll tell you that. I did. Oh. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Thank you. So, hey, Mark, I'd just like to give a shout out to your yellowish tan going on there. Looks pretty nice. It's called jaundice. 
The reason oh. I turn my lights this color because it makes my skin look smooth. If I put the natural light, it makes me look real. You look like well, the inner furon. I also Trump noticed over. the cans or something behind you. You've got some red mixed in with some purple or something back there. You didn't take all the color out. No. Oh, did it? Is there something? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. At this time of the evening, this is natural peak time in this trailer park, so the energy levels are low. So <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> power starts to drain. Turn on the, the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah, Marcus, is, oh, Marcus is holding the flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> I've got Turn. the best looking skin on the panel, I think, right now. Turn on the uh, Trump filter on the camera. <laughs> Trump filter. <laughs> well, see, if you want to make it more realistic that you're at Walmart, then you know, turn the true lighting on. You can't look good at Walmart. Come on. Yeah. You got to get a point, video man. clip of people fighting in the background one at a time, <laughs> you know, throwing throwing Campbell soup at each other. Oh God. So Brian, I actually have a question for you about yes about the profile Unity. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have I have two two questions. Um, one, um, what was it like working with um, so many different people on the same thing. And I know you guys kind of covered this last night on the Stu show. Sure. But, but you know, it's, it's this show, right? Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it's definitely different. I mean, you'll notice on my products, like there's TVC on certain products and that's like a collaboration. So if you look at the Drop Dead and you look at the Profile Unity, there's just TVC, the Vapor Chronicles. And if you look at the uh, Drop, Drop, uh, drop solo the top side top side dual you'll notice that it says a pvc creation right. the pvc creations are my complete creation from start to finish the things that i want to come out with on the market the collaborations are different ideas from different people coming together and you know the watofo process was a little bit different than anything i'd ever done before there was more compromises there was more you know sitting back and allowing other things to be done by certain people and giving my input and then coming up with things and um you know but you just kind of roll with it when you make a decision to move forward uh you, you try to help the best you can you give feedback with tofo is definitely more of a machine the way they work and the way that they um they have calendars and schedules and it's a lot more structured and uh, it was it was definitely different. And I'm I'm not a professional. I'm just a dude in a basement that you know right. started vaping and got lucky. And I'm learning as I go along through all of this. So, but he does have a wall full of money, step, though. Step I think people stats. people on the outside have misconceptions about who we are and what we do and what what this is all about. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, um, people see your name on a product and they automatically assume that you're an over working a machine and, in the factory. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or they like that. assume that you drive a Lamborghini now because you have your name on a product. And, it's not even close to that. And yeah, no, it's it's. I've I've heard about some of the contracts. A lot of you know, with fifty cents per product, dollar per product, and you know. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, if you sell five hundred thousand products, yeah, yeah, there's money. It's just. Yeah. So you know, was, not everything sells like that, though. Yeah, and it doesn't sell five hundred thousand overnight either. No, it's a long yeah. process. Yeah, because um, yeah, I remember on one of the vape team shows, you had <laughs> said that it, it it's been over a year, and you were still selling about ten thousand drops a month. Yeah, last month was like month fifteen, I think, and we sold six thousand eight hundred drops Damn. in one month. Congratulations! Yeah. That's a huge congratulations. That's that's Thank you. success. And you don't have to have money to have success. Money doesn't equal success. You know what I mean? Money is just a benefit sometimes. But you know, like he said earlier, though, too, it takes determination. It takes right. the the drive because, like, that was one thing that actually Amy Relish, your wife, had actually said because it was when I was struggling with my own channel and my own spouse. And uh, I had said some stuff on one of your guys' lives, and and I don't know how many people actually really pay attention to chat, but like Amy had actually responded to me saying that, hey, one time Brian tried to sell our car and my, and my bird, you know, to get it going. So I mean, that's just dedication. You just, you know, it can pay off. You just gotta, like you said earlier, you just gotta figure out what you can and can sacrifice. There's a question in chat for Brian from Philly, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this right. It says at Brian, without being a big reviewer. How do you think someone should go about shopping something around? Do you have to make a name for yourself first, do you think? Yeah, I didn't understand that question either. Yeah, what do you, Philly, what do you mean by shopping something around? I think if, he says if he has an idea for a product, how would you go about getting that product in the right person's hands to get the opportunity to have it hit the market? 
presented. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I knew the answer to that. I mean, my opportunity, which I can only speak from, had to do with you know reaching out to com- to companies that I had relationships with through doing reviews for you know two years at the time, and um, also knowing people and having that opportunity. And um, the idea was, I guess, good enough that they were willing to take a risk and try it. And um, it's really tough because the only other option you have is to put up your own money, which is going to cost you a ridiculous amount. And you're going to have to trust that who you're paying that money to to get the product made from a factory, probably in China, because, you know, that's going to be the most affordable method. And then you're going to have to figure out who's going to distribute it, who's going to, you know, I mean, uh, honestly, a lot of products succeed because of the company you're working with has their tentacles out across the world to all the big distros and then products that have good reputations and names, they sell like last, uh, like just the profile unity, for instance, um, that has sold one online store bought 8,000 of them and they only had like 40 of each color left this morning in 24 hours. Wow. 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 That's one store. So, you know, but, but, Part of that's because of, you know, reviews have been really positive. Part of it is because of, you know, uh, Watofo has a huge network out there. So, I mean, there's so many variables that it's hard to predict each each one. Do you find it's it's easier to self-promote as a, as a product designer? Or do you, I mean, because you put a lot in, I mean, it, again, people probably have no clue how much work is involved in any of this stuff. And I, I follow you on, on, on Instagram, I'm, you know, part of the V team group and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I see you're constantly like resharing other people's posts, trying to get the word out there, sharing your own posts, you're, you, you promote, um, do you think it's better for you to self promote or just stick with the, with the company? You have to self promote that. Like your value is your promotion. Like what, what are they, what is your value to this company? What are you paying for? You're paying for obviously the idea and the inspiration for the product. You're also paying for promotion. And when you promote each time your product gets out there more, it returns a benefit to you financially. So, you know, you, you got to push for that. Yeah. I agree that- with that. Because if, if, I mean, on a, I guess on Milo, what I would say is if, you don't believe in yourself who's going to yeah so you need to put that out there that yeah I, I agree with that but but i think that a great promoted product with a great name will not be popular unless it's great it's as simple as that uh if you go and all you have to do is go to like vapor dna go to element vape look at the thousands of products and look at how many reviews are are for that product some, a lot of them have six, two, five. When you start seeing 100, 200, and that's real customers leaving reviews and leaving their opinion, that's when you start to see the products that blew up. Like I think the Aegis Legend has uh, 455 positive reviews on Vapor DNA. That thing sold 2 million. 2 million they sold. It was a good, it was a good mod, though. It was, it, that's why it has that many reviews. That's why it sold. So like we're dealing with... Two percent probably of the entire vaping world knows or gives a fuck about the Vapor Chronicles or Mark or any reviewer. The reviewers are the springboard that gets the information out, and then it's up to the distribution companies and really the shops and consumers to decide if they're going to not only buy it today, but it's going to start a trend because people buy it, they tell people, and it sort of just goes and goes and goes and bigger and bigger and bigger. And all those products that are successful have a lifespan that goes not just a month or two or three where the hype is. Hype is, you can hype anything and sell a little bit of, real quick. It's the things that have staying power. Like the top side's been out since September and it's just starting to like really blow continuously. You know what I mean? Those products that have legs are the ones that sell the best. Right. Just people yeah, love them. There are people out there that self, uh, well, I don't know, that they don't go to like China, they don't go to any of, like, uh, isn't QP Designs, don't, don't, don't they do everything without some big company behind them? I'm not sure. The, the, Mark, do you have any uh, information about QP Designs? They're in, chi- they have their shit made in China, I know that. Oh, they do? Yeah. 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 See, I didn't know that. I actually thought that they had to. someone who has a pretty well-known product. I think it might even be a Met. Maybe it was Stan. Had there's they didn't go to some well-known company. They actually like paid a company to to make them, and then they were they were just selling them, and, and it did pretty good. So you can do it. You just have to put in the work. You have to get out there, 
ask questions, find people like, not Brian himself, but people like Brian and people that have done it and say, hey, what do you do? How do I, you know what I mean? So um, Philly said, thank you for the information, Brian. Sure. Um, the other question I had about the profile unity was, um, how long did it take you guys working together, you and Joel, um, and off and, and Watofo, but you and Joel mainly, how long did it take you guys to go from, you know, basically having it as an idea, like everything together, to having your first usable prototype? How long, what was that process? Like? Mm, I try to think of it, it's, it's hard for me to remember because it's been really freaking busy, like the past year and a half for me. But um, I would say, well, I think it was October, early October, like right when the top side launched, um, probably like two months, maybe a month and a half, maybe a month and a half to two months for the first prototype. And then, you know, I have probably six of them in front of me. So we changed a whole bunch of stuff along the way, improving stuff. What do you do with the prototypes? You just keep them, put them up on the shelf? <laughs> Uh, it depends. Like a lot of times I'm, I'm a person that likes to like sand them and drill them and make changes myself before I send ideas back to the company because it takes like, usually like when you make a change, it'll take like between two to three weeks to get a fixed version back to you again. So a lot of times if I can make an alteration at the house, I'll do it myself and then I'll, I'll send over the idea. That actually brings up something. And, and I hope people don't, you know, everyone on the panel doesn't mind me just asking questions. Um, but that brings up another question for me. Last night, I heard you saying this, and you just said it now. You actually put physical work, like physical sanding and boring things out and and all that. It, have you done that with all of them, or is that something that you just recently started? Because no. I can almost guarantee you people are under the assumption that everybody that gets involved with, with making drippers and product, they literally just get in touch with a company and say, hey, I have this idea, do it this way, thanks, and that's it. You actually put in physical work, right? Like, like yeah. I've, them... I on every one of my projects, I get hands on. So I like with the top side, we were having a lot of problems with the bottle originally, and I wanted it to be airtight. And I was doing water testing it with myself, like underwater on my couch with just. And this is all like t hand tools, you know, stuff stuff from the garage yeah, at my office. I, and, yeah. I work with really small medical electronics for my day job, and I do a lot of like I have like you know different tools to be able to see up close to things. And I have the ability to um, use an otoscope to look at the real fine details of things. And um, one of the things that um, uh, I'll do at the, at the office and stuff like that is to be able to, to use certain t uh, drill bits to be able to get in there and, and have really good um, ability to, to do the fine work that needs to be done. But the problem with me was I didn't have experience working with metals. And I had a lot of issues early on with having metal shards, like little metal pieces. And I had to like protect my eyes, protect my hands. So you learn as you go along. Yeah, I literally have no feeling left in my hands yeah. because stainless steel from work. Yeah. And it's hard as hell. Like to drill a hole in stainless steel is like, I had to go to like Home Depot and get special drill bits and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Especially yeah. if you go 304 is not too bad. When you get to 316 and above, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, we this kind of naturally we were going to go to Mark on the uh, talk about like the bulk for a little bit, but this kind of also raises another question. We were talking about in private. St, are you have any uh, desire or in the mix to do anything product wise? <laughs> Actually, I've got a product in the works right now. Uh, oh shit! It, it's in prototype stage at the moment, and next week i'll have a little bit more information on it so uh, i was kind of messing with folks a few weeks back about oh i got this thing coming which i love to kid around with stuff but actually i finally got things in order and uh i've got my first like brian was saying earlier how you know we put it to paper we give it to them they come back with us with cad drawings and then you start kind of working back and forth so I'm in that stage right now with it. So, so hopefully within, I don't know, this one could be just a little bit out or it could happen pretty fast. I really don't know yet, but this being my first product, I've had the luxury of hanging with everybody to know what you got to go through on this. So I'm not, I'm not somebody that's going, Ooh, ooh it's about to happen. 
<laughs> I know I know how this stuff gets laid out. So yeah, you gotta have the inside scoop. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, that was gonna gonna be the kind of follow up question since you're you know you're pretty close with uh, you know Mark and Mike and and Brian and all that is like because they kind of give you like almost like pointers like if you come to them and be like man this is happening or like well yeah that's gonna happen or this is gonna happen and kind of had a heads up of how the process works. Actually, no, they tell us to go fuck ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just tell you that. Well. I do remember in, in one of the shows, Mike was talking about how um, he had got a hold of Brian. And uh, you and uh, Mike actually kind of worked out the airflow on the rebirth a little bit. And so it, it's, it's nice that, you know, everyone sees all you guys together every week. And we all know that you guys get in Zoom and talk and mess around. But it, it's, it's nice to hear that you guys actually, like, help each other and talk and give feedback and all that kind of stuff. It's actually pretty cool. Well, yeah, because that's also kind of what inspired us is if you just get a team together, people that either have the same goal or like minds or stuff like that, it, it helps because when, uh, you know, one of us or whatever can't do something, we can collaborate together. Or even when it comes to like channel promotion, uh, team promotion, stuff like that, when you have you know multiple people on different schedules and stuff like that there's always like someone available essentially so it's just kind of an ongoing thing i think that's better than sometimes solo reviewers at least when it comes to like newer reviewers because like you know mike he's solo mark you know everybody's solo but you've been in it so long and you have the channel growth i think uh it's uh it's almost easier for newer reviewers to get like together and form a team because then you can have that continuous grinding of that machine essentially so they don't call us the fab five for nothing well, no cool. actually he said something about the fat five and i didn't get that because that's just not nice mark <laughs> well it's it's nice to have a mastermind group you know what i mean it is and, and that's pretty much what uh what it ends up being is you end up being a mastermind group you have issues you have questions you have going ask and you guys are obviously you know all part of the same mastermind group which is which is Ray, can you French inhale? So uh, uh, the wife handed me some notes. <laughs> the the wife handed me some notes from chat, and these are actually pretty good questions. So somebody asked, uh, Brian, uh, are you going to do a video demo of the Profile Unity yourself? No, there was lots of videos on the Profile Unity from the reviewers. I mean, we talked about why we did it, how we did it. I don't, I don't think that people should do reviews of their own products. Like if you look at my other product launch videos, well, well, it depends on what it is. Like it, my products, the TVC creation products, I do like real detailed breakdowns, right? But if you look at the um, drop dead, I did a video just like I did with Joel with just me and Billy talking and doing, you know, just an introduction. I think that's a better way to do it when you have a collaboration. Cause first of all, I don't want to take too much credit for things and I don't want to make it seem like, I'm like a mastermind behind things or something like that. And I want to make sure that everybody gets the credit they deserve uh, with TOFO. Now, I think I will be doing like a wicking tutorial video myself to show people what the way I do it and how I get the best vape out of it. But that's probably it. I, that's yeah. probably a good idea because yeah. from personal experience, I can tell you, the first time I wicked this, it was perfect. I, I, I followed the wicking that I saw online i looked at the instruction manual probably one of the only devices that i've looked at the instruction manual for um and and i got it perfect when i had to rewick i didn't get it perfect and i could tell uh, um i had a little issue uh, but i i fixed it got it rewicked perfect again and when you get it wicked perfect it's amazing flavor amazing cloud production and so it, um, I think doing a wicking tutorial would be amazingly helpful for everyone. Yeah. That's what a lot of people never do. They don't bother watching presentation videos and they think they kind of know what to do. And then they end up fucking it up and hating on something when they could just watch the presentation video and know exactly how something works. The greatest actually example of that mark, cause you're a hundred percent right is when Bogan released his mech mod, the Bonza. Uh, I watched his presentation video so when I did my actual review of it, there wasn't any kind of hitches in it, but then there were some reviewers out there that did theirs and like left out big chunks of information that was just on the friggin' reveal. 
It's yeah. like, why, why aren't you guys talking about that? I can tell because you did not watch that video. Yeah. I mean, geez, guys. Like some people just think they're, they just know it all and they don't need to watch it, but. Yeah. Or they say yeah. things like, I don't want to be influenced by the person, but the person, hopefully they're not doing a review of their product. They're just telling you about how the thing came about, what they're, what, what the features are and what it offers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly the one, one that I had the biggest problem with was like the person did the review and like one of the things with the Bonza that is a really good key in it is it does have the Delrin uh, plastic sleeves on the inside. So you don't accidentally get an arc from it. Uh, and that person never went over it. And somebody actually had said in the comments, you know, uh, does it have any kind of protection? And they were just like, oh, no. It's like, yeah, it's got sleeves in it, man. I mean, that's one big key to it. So I always <laughs> watch the presentation videos um, yeah. that way because I'll, I'll use a product a week or two, you know, before I do the review on it. But I'll <laughs> actually watch the presentation because I already know what my thoughts are to make sure that I haven't missed something. Uh, the other question we had is from Minnesota Clouds. Uh, Mark, why do you not self-promote the bulk RTA? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm weird like that. I don't like, I don't know. I just never, I don't know. Could it be have, maybe because like you said, you've got burned on the last couple? No, it ain't that. I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's a bit of being lazy or just... <laughs> I just don't like. I don't know. I just feel weird promoting myself. Well, you promote it I'm really, yourself. I'm really bad at. It. I'm horrible at it. So I don't know. I just that's probably one of the main reasons why the BTFC flopped like it did, or, or apparently it didn't sell, was because I didn't promote <laughs> it and advertise it enough. If I put as much work into it as Brian does with his stuff, it probably would have been really successful. But I think I'm just lazy. I think that's what it is, honestly. Well, the BTFC is known for being the easiest deck to build on. Yeah. Mark, I told you. I told you with the Nada, you could cut me in on it, and uh, <laughs> I would have. I would have fucking helped you sell the hell out of that. That, was, that would probably been not a good idea. Probably not. Not, not yeah. a good idea for me. <laughs> I don't want lawsuits for fucking little plugs flying in people's lungs. Yeah. I'm actually really excited about getting a BTFC. Yeah, it's great. Oh Make sure you get health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> are Are there any more chat questions, Mikey? Uh, those were the, the two that she wrote down, so I don't know if it's because they were one more either good questions or they were asked possibly multiple times. So, ST, uh, or Spring, you have any questions? No. No? Um, I'm, I'm good at the moment. Uh, wait, wait, uh, real quick, we're on an hour and a half, so the question is with Mark and uh and and i want to call him scott <laughs> st and brian uh, uh how much longer did you want to go in the industry or on the show <laughs> on the show, <laughs> on the show. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about to we're about to, yeah. <laughs> about to reveal some information for y'all uh because i do want to touch with mark uh on the uh on, the uh, on his uh, rta coming out so that's yes. what i want to see uh, how much time you guys wanted to keep going? I can last all night. We already had that discussion. We already know you can't. Yeah. Okay, nobody's saying I'm going now. So go ahead, Rick, with the question. Well, I I, I was going to ask St. Um, this is your your first product, right? The, the one that you're coming out with. Do, do you find that it's easy, or, or well, not easy, but do you find that it's um, easier than you thought it would be? to deal with the company and, and get stuff out? The only reason why I can say it's kind of easy for me because I've got history with this company. I know the particular person I'm dealing with pretty good. It's not like reaching out to somebody new. Right. Uh, Mark and Brian can testify to this. With certain companies, you are dealing with a different culture that do not understand the way we're putting things to paper sometimes. So that language barrier is kind of hard to deal with. But fortunately, the person I'm dealing with understands English very well. Uh, and again, you got to remember, I've been friends with all these guys for going on four years almost. And so with everything that they've done, I've been there right by their sides with them while they're doing it. So I know all the ins and outs to all this. It's not like 
just somebody having an idea and going, wow, what do I do with this idea? You know, I know all the, I know all the ins and outs pretty much. So it's more comfortable for you. Yes. It, now there's still a learning curve to some of it because it's not actually out on the market yet, but I feel like after I get this out, if there's other things I see I want to do, it just gives me that much more reassurance that, you know, I'm not like questioning myself on stuff and I'm pretty confident in going into what I'm doing at the moment. I'm not like, Oh gosh, you know, I'm worried about this. You know, I'm, I'm so it's not really as scary as I guess what it could be going into, you know, trying to develop something. So, but I'm ready to do it. I mean, I'm ready to get, I'm excited about getting information back and, you know, getting this out on the market. So say that's probably the hardest part right there knowing that it's it's there and you're just waiting it's like exactly uh, yeah it's like you're you're anxious to to have it in stores and well and, and one other thing you got to remember about this especially if you're dealing with a company over in china they're on a completely different time schedule we are so when we're going to bed they're getting up going to work so a lot of times you got to stay up a little bit later so you can communicate or, you know, you're kind of passing each other back and forth in message or whatever. So, see, and I think that's why I was successful with that. That I did a sub ohm tank from a company that I don't think anybody knew about. Uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, Jiayong or Jiayong. It's they make a sub ohm tank called the Shadow Series. And I, they actually sent me one. And because the fact of my work schedule, I was available when they were available. So like, so I have the opposite schedule of everybody else in the United States. I think that would definitely help a lot. Yeah, you get a lot of uh, hello dear emails. Hello dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess that's a good question also for Brian and then Mark. But Brian, with your uh, multiple devices out there, how how hard was that for you to be in that stage where you're just kind of just waiting to either hear or see something in the mail that is something that you're working on? I think that um, the, the top side was the hardest by far, just because I was so worried about somebody else coming out with that idea first. So that was like a big, and it, the anticipation was huge. I wanted to make sure not only I got some prototypes going, that, but also that we would get it out on, on the market in time. Because timing is everything in this industry. If you're, you could be two weeks late and you're fucked. So that's really important. And um, as far, I don't know, man, things flow really fast. When you start having a couple projects, you're always working. There's always messages flying back. I mean, I have thousands of messages on my phone that I have chats going on and I'm always working. So uh, it's exciting, but it's also stressful. And and I say, I could say this, like every product I've ever released, like I thought it was terrible the final week before it came out. Because you just assume that you've messed up somewhere and it's not going to work or people aren't going to like it or something like that. So... So, Mark, uh, kind of same question with you. Uh, I mean, how how is that anticipation level to just be waiting for either a word or something in the mail for something that you help make? With the the bulk, I was pretty excited. Um, not the bulk, the BTFC. I was really excited because I knew it was going to be really, really, really good. With the bulk RT, I'm, I'm even more excited because, like, I've changed I've changed everything so many times to where to make sure it's everything is perfect on it. So I'm like really excited to get the final piece, which will be uh, this week. But when I first got the the Nada, I was, you know, really excited, but I learned a lot from that RDA, like things to do, things not to do. But I think with the BTFC, I was really stoked. But with this one, I'm gonna be even more excited because I made sure everything was perfect on it. RTA live. Hell yeah, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be somebody out there who's gonna bitch and moan about it. But it is what it is, folks. Well, Minnesota Clouds is probably out in the crowd right now bitching about RTAs. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think hey, of RTAs, Frank? Brian, I got a question for you. Sure. Um, someone in chat, Zero Cool, said he wants to know more information on the Yeezy chip uh, with the top side. Yeah, the biggest issue that's holding up the Yeezy, um, everything's been finished as far as, like, the chip and stuff like that and uh, shape and everything. Uh, the biggest holdup is the material. 
we've been testing out so many different materials, trying to find the right combination. Like one of them looks really good and I think it's super sexy, but the paint finish scratches really easily if you put it in your pocket. Like, so um, another material is extremely like rare that's never been used for a vape device. It's super light, super strong, and it looks great, but it's expensive as hell. And there's like all these concessions that have to be made and decisions that have to be made with the manufacturer and my input. And, and it's tough for me because I'm afraid, like if they say, well, Brian, this is going to cost this much. Do you think we're going to sell 10,000 pieces? Cause we need to order 10,000 to start. And what if we sell 4,000 and then they have to take 6,000 times, you know, $80 their cost. Do you know how much money that is? And I don't want it to be my burden, but at the same time, I'm at a point now that I almost want to risk some of my money so that I can feel the pressure and own it more. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it is a risk that I'm taking for, for the, with their money. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that sucks. I don't want to be, I don't want to feel that pressure. So. Yeah. See, and I would think that would almost, almost kind of be easier for you because you've had so many successful products that, so it's kind of neat to, to still have the mindset of that there is a possibility of something bad happening. I could see some people just continue to ride that trend and be like, I'm untouchable. What are you talking about? Hell here? no. I do. Dude, if you study people and success, you'll know that like the rise is beautiful but, and people love success, but people love your failure and they're waiting for it. And that's the way human beings work. So I'm aware of all that. I have plans for after this. I don't take myself too seriously. Um, I'm just, like I said, most of the time, I just feel lucky and, and fortunate. That's it. See, that's that's what I kind of want to say um, about the whole thing. I started YouTube, and I thought it was going to be all cake and be easy to do. It's <laughs> not, especially when you do everything from your phone, and that's all you have is just a phone. Yeah. But you know what? You keep grinding it out, though, and that's kind of the point. That's kind of what we've all said, and that's why I think us four got together is – we're just we're just not going to stop to grind. So that's hell no. So uh, hey, Mark, so I keep saying we're going to get to this, but did you want to uh, drop anything out about the bulk since it's getting really close? There you go. You can self promote now. Um, they had fifty pieces ready at NVE, but there were a few imperfections. So I told them to not hand it out to anyone or give it to anyone. So the final, final, final retail piece will be done, or I should have it Monday or Tuesday. I can't and wait for the bulk. What's going to be a little different on this one, because Omer is, I think, either cheap or just don't know what's going on, is they're going to send me, like, 50 of them, and I'm going to be the one that's going to be shipping them to reviewers. <laughs> and they're going to handle – I told them they're going to handle the bigger reviewers who, of course, you know, have a fee – and a lot of the international people. So a lot of the smaller reviewers and a lot of the closer friends of mine, I'll be shipping them too. So I'm going to do buddy, hey old pal. <laughs> I'm going to do the presentation video this week and in the video I'm going to state clearly like what I mean by, you know, who's smaller reviewers because everyone has a channel. Everyone's a reviewer, I know that, but I only have so many to to send out, you know what I mean? So there's got to I got to draw the line somewhere. So so to kind of kind of pull back the curtain a little bit, though, how you're saying that you know that Omir might be uh, don't know if they're cheap or what they're doing. So is the in that usually the way it works when it comes to a product, the the company that is producing it, they're the ones that do all the distribution for yeah. all the reviewers. Do you give them a list, or do they just have their own list? Uh, usually, you. I mean, I don't know how I, I don't I can't speak both. for anyone else. Yeah, both. I mean, I can't speak for other people, but for me, I make sure there's a list of people that are guaranteed to get it. And then there's also a list I tell them, don't ever send them anything of mine. <laughs> but with Omir, and for them to save money, they want it because if they have to ship 50 pieces out, <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> it would cost them an arm and a leg to ship 50 pieces out of China. So it's cheaper for me to send them from the States to the States. So. That, 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 I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> Brian, that, Jesus. that was a good one, though. I love that photo. <laughs> so, you had said you had said that some reviewers charge right to do like, yes. and uh, I can see like rip trippers and all that and I've seen the uh, rip trippers love uh, Brian stuff but uh, what's that like when you're dealing you know as like a product developer when it's a what 
<clears throat> what's it like when you're as a product developer? What's it like dealing with the reviewers that charge to do the review? That's something the company and the reviewer they negotiate. We don't do anything. We don't negotiate with other reviewers when it comes to anything like that. Yeah, I don't want to be involved with that at all. Yeah, that's between them and the company. Yeah, that's. I think that's what causes drama more than anything. <gasps> There's oh, the evidence. Yeah. Here they are. The truth is out. <laughs> That's the thing in the future. You're going to be able to show people doing anything you want just by doing like Photoshop stuff. <laughs> what do you Very think of the, the spring? Go ahead. Go ahead. Spring, what do you think of the bulk so far, just from what you've seen, like as an aesthetics? I want it. I want to try it out. Um, I've done quite a few RTA reviews this year and tried out a few because um, I said this year was going to be my RTA year. Uh, last year, I did the intake. Um, and the Kyle and Mini. And both of those really got me into RTAs. I did try the Zeus uh, Duel, and I liked it. Right now, I actually have the Peacemaker um, from Squid Industries, Industry, yeah. yeah, that I'm trying on to review come soon on it. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in the bulk. Definitely. That's a question hey. for, for the guests is... Um, what do you guys prefer, you know, personally, RTA or RDA? Oh, RTA all the way. Hell yeah. I'm on squonk life right now. So RDA, I get more juice than an RTA, easier to change cotton than an RDA, or a better flavor. It's just simpler to fill. It's Less so much better with consumption. This. Yeah, a squonker with an RDA, the best perfect balance between portability, flavor, power, all that. Well, there's a big there's a big reason why I'm on RTAs too, because you get them for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a good reason. That's a judgment thing right there, yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that I love regulated devices. I really do love them, even though even though the top side, because God, I'm so sick of saying that freaking name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even though the top side is regulated, but really. Brian is the first one in my eyes to put out a good regulated squonk device. So before that, you pretty much were relying on mechs. Now, I love them. I've got them. I've got high dollar ones up there. But at the end of the day, I've always kind of resorted back to regulated devices. So that's why I love RTA so much. Yep, exactly. Same here. Well, and that's the fun. Oh, go ahead, Spring. I have to say I'm going to stroke Brian's ego for a second. Oh, so am I. So we'll double team him here in a minute. The, the top side <laughs> was a dream come true for me because I cannot stand. I absolutely despise juice on my hands. So, <gasps> yes. Yes. The top side was a dream. It, it was a dream come true. Thank you. Um, dude, thank you for buying it and vaping it. I appreciate it. I look like a sip. And uh, with what I like, I because I bought the dual is uh some of my builds like i have you know a sub gifted me a spade it's a great device but here's the thing that's so awesome about the top side in my opinion is i love my spade but i can't go into voltage mode top side top side deal you, you got voltage mode because some of your builds that like i do or there's some that i'll use a dual fuse clap in have like you know omen out way high and it's like wattage doesn't do it for me if i put in volts it's great so the top side dual and the top side series they do that so i actually take that to work because i enjoy vaping it that much and i was scared to begin with but that's the other thing it's i'm a metal worker i break shit a lot i don't even have a scratch on the top side dual yet so just don't drop it on the battery door that's all i have to say oh yeah yeah, yeah that <laughs> That same subscriber got me the top side single, and I'm I'm perfectly happy with it. I got some 30 T's to put in there. Good to go. So then Plus, I get a nice cool vape, you know, at 400 watts. Yeah. So it's I mean, 400 watts. Yeah, I mean, what? Mine heck? caught fire and burnt my trailer down. So. <laughs> so Brian, I, I I have a question actually about the top side. Um, yeah. Other than battery life, what are the 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 main differences between the dual and the, because I don't have one yet. So I'm, I'm, I don't know if I want to get the dual or the single. Um, I mean, there, there's always this battle of efficiency. So when you have 90 Watts versus 200 Watts, there's a lot more, and this is all the engineers that work on these types of things, but they have to figure out like how, 
what batteries are going to be used with the device and how it's going to perform at this wattage level versus this wattage level. And there's a lot of calculations that have to be put in. Um, but they're, they're very, they vape very similar, but they're just slightly different, you know, and I think they both perform excellent. The one thing about the top side, the top side is going to be like that car you love and you keep that just has so much usability. It's easy and it just works. And that's always what I shoot for when I design products. I'm not great at like, making stuff pretty and making it super high end, but it, it's just well thought out and it works well. And that's oh, what people have found. Yeah. The usability, man, it wins. I, I have shelf mods over. I, I was showing people last night. I have like rows and rows of super high end shit and I don't use any of it. Cause I like it's that name too, shelf mods. Yeah. They're shelf. They look, I mean, it's great if your neighbor cares, but my neighbors don't give a shit. My wife doesn't care. I'm not trying to impress people. My value is not in what I vape. You know, but now I, but I collect like Batman memorabilia. So, I mean, I get it. We all have little things we're into. So if you're into collecting stuff and if you like getting on lists, but you know, whatever you like, who cares? Don't let anybody tell you what and what you shouldn't do. Just do you. And if you enjoy it and you want to spend your money doing it, then do it. If you don't like the top side, cause it's not your thing, then don't like it. If you don't, you know, that's the beauty of your money, your, your choices. And see that thing. I have the geek vape Nova and Besides the Batman mod, because it's not mass produced, so the Nova is still my favorite. It does a little bit over 12 volts. Um, it's, it's an awesome mod. That was a question from chat that I personally actually would like to know, because I do use a lot of mechs. Uh, Brian, do you have any uh, any plans on ever doing a mech mod with someone? I have, I've had one done for like a year, a year, almost a year and a half now. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> but it's never coming out. So yes, I have one. It is finished, <laughs> and uh, it's, it was the prototype. But it, um, but it's never going to see the, the light of day. But I have it right here. So I've been in Brian's basement. He's done everything. But I have He's so got many, one of everything. Trust I me. I should I should do a show someday about all the things that I didn't feel were worthy of coming out, like the topside RDA. How about that? What? Sexy. Yeah, wow. never never happening. But there's all kinds of things. I've sh- I've bins of things. You got to be picking. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He did have one mech though, and I was thinking, wow, this is going to be badass. It would have been awesome. It's just never going to see the day of light. I'm never going to get credit for that either. It, let's just say this: it was a tiny, tiny bit taller than the Bestia, and it was a button oh. on the bottom, ah. and it and it had things that had never been done in mechs before, and it was going to be like price great. It was, but. I have to make choices that are the best for myself and in, in the future. So, but it was really cool, man. And see, that's the only bad thing about, I think Max sometimes is since the market could be hit and miss, it's not like, you know, like a top side or top side dual, or even an RDA, like with, with Mark or an RTA is with Max. It's you can charge a higher price point because you do have those mech heads, but it's not such a, a, a product that in almost anybody would buy. Is, is kind of the bad thing with it. Um, we're coming up on the two hour mark, fellas, and I know these guys are probably ready to spend some time with their families and stuff yep. like that. So, oh, shit. Um, I hate my family, by the way. We go ahead. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, we'll just, we'll just stay on. Everybody else can go. <laughs> Angel <laughs> almost died on not another vape show the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Which I did see her grab some from the shelf, so it's cool that she's up and good and all that. So that's awesome. Yeah, she's getting her show ready. No, she's oh, yeah, the, the vape lines are coming on too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Mark's attention and we'll bounce. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get it uh, ended, and uh, we do our sign offs and stuff. But let's do uh, let's let's definitely do a big round of thank you all so much, and and also to Mike, even though he had to leave early. So, but it showing up was freaking amazing so i want to thank each and every single one of you and uh we'll just kind of just kick it off to you three call you out one at a time if you want to tell people where they can find you or what you got in the mix or whatever shout outs you want definitely feel free so let's uh let's definitely start with uh mr st uh i thank y'all for having us on or me on uh you know it's pretty cool we so deep into doing our own shows and kind of working together, we rarely do or get a chance to kind of you know, hop on other people's stuff, but it, it was pretty cool to do. I think y'all, uh, if folks don't know where to find me, shame on you. But anyway, 
<laughs> go look up ST. You'll find me. <laughs> All right. And Brian, what are you up to? Um, yeah. You can find me at uh, the underscore vapor underscore chronicles on Instagram. Uh, also on Facebook, the vapor chronicles and uh, YouTube, the vapor chronicles. And I have a channel on YouTube called the vape team separate channel. So Thursday nights, 10 PM Eastern standard time, you can catch uh, Mike and Mark on the show. And ST has been on as a guest, not as special as Mark, but he was a guest <laughs> and uh, Sunday night, not another vape show on uh, Fagan vape and Fagan's channel. And we appreciate you guys having us on and being able to chat and the shows. Uh, if this is a sign of things to come, I'm, I'm expecting big things because you guys do a great job. Thank Hell you. yeah, appreciate thank it. So much. That's awesome. Yeah, we can't, again, I'm just going to keep saying that we can't thank you guys enough. So, yeah, when, when he said y'all were coming on the show, I was like, oh no. That's why your mic didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will say this show is better put together than most shows that have been out for years so you guys really do an awesome job and uh i'm happy that we were on we had a good time answered a lot of questions and it was a pretty clean show which is i guess good but <laughs> yeah, you guys got you guys really do got an awesome show keep it up definitely well, you got us nervous so we we stuck to the script maybe next time we'll 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 start talking about you know we'll get a little nasty questions. all right <laughs> yeah no, yeah we, we need to know y'all first a little more you know just get all sexified up in here <laughs> one thing we've learned if you try to change people are going to hate you for it. so keep doing what y'all are doing and yep. you'll, you'll be successful well thank you Hell yeah mark uh, what do you got for us? I just uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for inviting us. And like I said, you guys got an awesome thing here. Keep it going and just be yourselves. And if anyone tells you that you can't vape this way, or you can't vape that way, or you can't directly inhale, or you can't mouth to lung, fuck them. Vape the way you want to vape, and that's it. Hell yeah! Awesome. Yeah. And right. also, fuck the haters. Yep, fuck yeah. the haters. The more the more people care about you, the more they like you, the more the people that are unhappy are going to dislike you. So fuck them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Haters Great. help you too. Everywhere. Jealous, right. jealous, jealous. So circumstance, <laughs> Chad. Yeah. Go ahead. What you got? Uh, I just want to say, first of all, when I was getting ready to wick this at the start of the show, I lost one of the damn screws. It fell down on the floor, went on the table. The Kylan 2 screws, they fit in the holes for this. Just for anybody that wants to know. <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> it's a frail um, or... Yeah, just we I appreciate y'all coming on, man. It was it was exciting. Um hopefully we could do it again one day. All right. So uh, Ray, go ahead and do your sign off, please. Uh thank you guys for coming. It was <clears throat> it was a very cool show. I like it. You guys did provide amazing information. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's people like you in the community that keep people like us going. So, you know, I, a big, big thank you for that. And uh, you can find me on the YouTubies under Gone Vape Dash Ray. And uh, Facebook, Real Gone Vape, Instagram, Gone Vape, everywhere is Gone Vape, Gone Vape. Um, and I, I usually say, you know, look, if you see your friends vaping on a device that takes an external battery, Ask them to see their batteries. Check them. Look for dinks, dents, scratches, burrs, tears, anything. Explain battery safety. If they need to learn how to rewrap, send them over to YouTube. Check out Circumstance Vapes. Do a battery rewrap search. He does a good job. If you teach battery safety to your friends, maybe they'll teach it to their friends, and we can all be a safer community. And uh, stay off the cigarettes. Keep on vaping. I just want to say, because it was mentioned to me the other day, real quick, sorry to interrupt. If you watch my video... And you use a lighter to wrap your batteries. Don't hold the damn lighter on the batteries and heat the battery up. Oh god! <laughs> cause it to freaking <laughs> cause it to vent. Don't do that. No, follow the instructions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you'll find me. I have my own fan page on Facebook under Mad Viking. Instagram it's Mad Viking Vapor, um, and of course on YouTube as well. It's just I've cut it down to Mad Viking. I do have my uh, live juice review on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Central with Gone Vape. It's called Gone Vikings Juice Lounge. And then, of course, you'll find me here on sa Saturdays you know, with the, the team here. So, And I just want to thank each and every one of you and, of course, our special guests for coming by to vape with a Viking. Spring, what you got? Um, first and foremost, ST, Brian, Fagan, and Mike, shout out to y'all. I, I really appreciate y'all coming on the show. 
Um, I'm also going to do a shout out to my panel. These guys I couldn't do it without them. John Bape, Viking, Chad, y'all are great. And I want to thank each and every one of you in chat for coming and joining the, the Rising Vapors tonight. We really appreciate it. Much love. Shout out to Batman, Black Cat, White Face, Mr. 300. They did come in chat. So thank you as well. And you all guys know, stay off the Mickey sticks. That's the best thing you could do. And we'll see you next Saturday. Hell yeah, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. I, I, I want to shout out really quick. Uh, Subaru Nerd Vapes, cool yes. guy. He uh, he also just became my coil sponsor too. So, great. Oh, nice. Also, yeah. I'd like to shout out Spring because you've been supporting us for a long time, and I noticed noticed you then. Yes, I still notice you, and it's been uh, nothing but love. So, th there's a Hell reason yeah. we're doing Thank this. You. Thank He's you. always I in actually, chat all the time. I actually met Spring in Chattanooga. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got to meet um, St. and. I got to see Heavy again, and I got to meet Mike and then uh, Scott Vegans. Um, I will meet yo, yo, yo. Ron and Mark one of these days. Uh, <laughs> I'll be disappointed, but you will. Yeah. <laughs> Mark is a horrible person, just to warn you. <laughs> I think I get along great with with. Uh... He wouldn't recognize you in person. Don't worry about it. <laughs> room barbecue. No, Mark's a lovely human being. We could share a room together. I can't stand them, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Spring, for being you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.